All right, guys, we're in the FPV here, and today I'm going to do something that I don't usually do. So we're going to do a slight deeper dive into motor theory and talk about an exciting new product that I've been testing for quite a fair long time. It is the version 2 of the famous VCI 702 Tinywood motor. So if you recall the version 1 Spark motor, it was a lovely golden motor released about one and a half years ago in the beginning of 2024. It was smooth and had powerful dual ball bearings and it was this motor that I used to get third place at Wooptopia 2024. So um, here is some footage, a uh, throwback to over one year ago, one of my favourite tracks of all time, super flowy and super great for a motor like this. So um, instantly once released, um, the Spark motor became very well liked because it was um, so smooth it felt like you were flying on butter all the time. And uh, these dual bearings also have to increase the longevity, like the lifespan of the motor compared to a traditional bushing motor that will just wear after a few hundred packs, even if you put like lubrication on the shaft, right? But um, the V1 Spark motor, it wasn't perfect, and there were two like downsides about it. So the first downside was that it was a little heavy, so the version 1 weighed about 1.53 grams with cable and plug, which was on the heavier side. When you compare it to the um, Happy Model OEMs with bushings, which weighed about 1.47 grams. So there's an additional 0.07 grams for the, the dual bearings, which adds about 0.28 grams to your Tiny Whoop in total, compared to if you're using like a Tiny Whoop 702 or a Weebleed 702. Right, and secondly, it also wasn't the most efficient motor on the market, um, especially because the 29K KV that was on it was accurately stated, unlike many other manufacturers who actually do overstate the KV value, right? So it was common for me to get about one and a half minutes of flight time, which is not bad. It's good enough for three laps on almost any track, but it's not the best, right? So in 2025, right, enough yapping from me, we present the version two of the Spark motor. And this motor is now going to be um, called by a different name. It's going to be called the SE and DB versions. And there's going to be a whole different array of new KV and type options, right? So first we have the DB version with dual bearings, which is geared towards general pilots uh, and just like practice batteries on a track, like on a practice track. So this weighs 1.45 grams with cable and it's pretty crazy because it's even lighter than many motors on the market with bushings, right? And secondly, we have the SE lightweight version with bushings for elite pilots and just like racing at the lowest weight possible. This weighs 1.39 to 1.4 grams with a cable, which is significant weight reduction. And it's the second lightest um, normal 702 on the market behind the Tiny Whoop Top Spin at 1.38 grams. So it's just about 0.01 heavier than the Top Spin. And um, for each, the SE and DB versions, that'd be 23K, 27K and 30K through true KV values for each version. And also, the, there, there were some complaints on the Spark Motor V1 that it was um, some slightly loose shafts with the HQ and gem fan props. But after my testing, I found that there's no more such issue with, with these 1219S especially. Um, the shaft is nice and tight, uh, so no more slipping the shafts. So yeah, I'm going to talk about the development of this uh, V2 motor. So uh, VCI first sent me some prototypes in like um, October last year. So this was the first prototype of the V2 Spark Motor. Oh, sorry, the V2 SE and DB motor, sorry, very confusing terminology here. But in October 2024, I tested this. Um, the DVR is on the left right here. Great power, great efficiency, but still a little too heavy. This was like 1.55 grams, which was even heavier than the first version, right? Um, so we move on to the second prototype. This was uh, what I tested in December 2024. Some of this I used uh, in the DVR in AK's house in Arizona during my training there. The bell was redesigned to shave some weight and the KV was increased to 30K. And the winding method was changed from Y to Delta method. So more on that will be said in a moment, right? I used these um, motors in some of my December training footage with AK in Arizona. And moving on to the third and final prototype, I've been testing this since last month and uh, we have some material changes to increase efficiency. We return to the Y winding style and the KV is still 30K. And this was the motor I used in my most recent DVR uh, in the Syracuse Airbnb. And it's more efficient than this prototype over here. And it also has much better low end torque for reasons I'll explain in a moment, right? So even as a VCI pilot, my opinion is going to be a little biased, but for my flying style, I feel that this new VCI motor is really going to be the best option for the market for a smooth dual bearing motor that lasts many, many packs. As it has a great throttle curve and it's still light enough to easily, easily get sub 16 grams on almost any whoop without any crazy frame mods. Like, so this one, for example, is like 15.7 
and I didn't really bother to do any weight saving at all. The frame is stock, the cables are twisted, uh, and the camera mount is pretty heavy. So yeah, that's good. Um, just remember that even the DB version with dual bearings is 1.45 grams per motor, which is on par with many motors out there using bushings, right? Um, but the elephant in the room that I know everyone's curious about is how does this SE version of the, of the motor, right? The super lightweight version, how does it compare with the current meta for Tiny Whoop racing at the elite class level, which is the Newbie Drone Race Spec 702 motor. This motor, the Newbie Drone Race Spec, took first place at both Whooptopia and WBNE 2024. Um, really, in late 2024, we've seen the emergence of this new class of brushless motors that use the delta winding method instead of the Y winding method. That's actually a method for the termination of the um, coils inside the stator, as well as a super light double strand enamel wires, as you can see, compared to the standard silicon wires that we have on most tiny wood motors, right? So, talking a little bit more about delta and Y. Um, delta and Y are two different ways to terminate the uh, coils inside a, in, inside a motor, right? I'm going to throw a photo up here to show the difference. Well, the way you can tell if a motor is delta wound or Y wound is to look for a little black um, heat shrink termination Y on the bottom of the stator. So if you can see one, it's Y. But if there is no termination visible, it's delta. So for example, this is the V2 prototype that was um, delta. I'm not sure if you can see, but um, there is no termination point anywhere on the bottom of the motor. So that's how you can tell. Um, anyway, I'm an aerospace major, I'm not an EE major, so I'm not the most qualified to talk about this. But from what I do understand, here are the key differences. So delta wound motors right, tend to have a higher KV or RPM per voltage value than a Y wound motor. So that's to say that um, for two motors of the same stator volume and the same uh, like size, the delta wound motor has about 1.7 times or basically square root of 3 more KV than a Y wound motor. So this means that a delta motor just pulls more current than the Y, but it can give more power at a higher RPM. And inversely speaking, the Y1 motor would be more efficient at having a torque constant that's about 1.7 times or root 3 higher than the delta Y motor. So this means that a lot more torque is generated by the motor and the expense of a slightly less power. So I'm not the best at explaining this. So if you want a deeper dive in the differences, I'm gonna link a video down in the description. So really, the the fact that some motors, that not all motors are wound the same way, explains some of the key differences in performance feeling between a Delta and a Y motor. So some weeks ago, AK was telling me, um, for these newbie drone race spec motors, they really excel at high throttle values on tracks with really battery burning elements when you're ramping the throttle to like almost 100% all of, of the time, right? I can see why. If you've ever flown a race spec, right, you know that the motors are incredibly powerful and power hungry, and the KV of 30k is definitely understated. It's definitely closer to 40,000 true KV. You can feel that um, it's incredibly powerful and power hungry, but it flies absolutely horrific at throttle values below like 50%. There is absolutely no control. It feels like you're flying a banana, right? So in comparison, a Y wound motor like the VCI, this um, the new VCI that will be sold, right? It feels absolutely amazing at any throttle value. There's a lot of torque in the low end, a lot of grunt on the low end, but there is less um, top end punch than a race spec motor, right? So at the end of the day, I have quads with both motor winding styles, you can see, and I think they're just tools for a different job, right? So if you've got a high, um, speed open track with battery burning elements and you're always at like full throttle then maybe the race spec motor will be better for that track but if you're flying in like a tighter track technical track like an airbnb track like the one in syracuse right that might not be good for the race spec motor i did try the race spec on the syracuse airbnb and it was completely unenjoyable right and i did set on a much better time on the vci motors because i just had better control to do those tight turns uh, where you're not just pushing full throttle you're know, like maybe at like 50 percent or 60 percent throttle so yeah i've been yapping for way too long is it 10 minutes already but i'm gonna end the video here and i'm gonna just say that um you guys should be really excited about this new vci motor uh i hope that this video was useful and yeah, I'm going, I think I'm going to be using these motors um, for the rest of 2025 in my main Whoop race fleet for whatever races that come next. So yeah, please let me know down in the comments what you think about the differences and uh, any knowledge you have about electrical systems in brushless motors. So thanks and see you in the next video guys.